Hi, everybody. Meteorologist Joe Chaffee. Take our uh, daily look at the tropics, and we still have sun here Sunday evening, tropical storm Fiona. And what's been happening is that the, you can see the shear. You can see how the clouds are being blown off from west to east. Those are the high-level winds that are uh, shearing the cloud tops apart. But it's at the same time, there continues to be a flare-up of thunderstorms uh, in and around what's left of the core circulation as it moves uh, quickly to the west-northwest. And actually, what's interesting is you can see this trail of clouds that runs all the way down from the deep tropics and lifts um, up and around um, um, kind of a little bit of a feeder band. So uh, this thing is trying uh, desperately to hold together. In the meantime, right behind that trail of clouds is that uh, second tropical wave, which is having a bit of a tough time in terms of developing any kind of uh, important convection. And you can kind of see it's got that uh, cyclonic curvature to it, but without any kind of core thunderstorms developing, it's hard for any, any sort of source circulation to uh, really get going or any kind of uh, core of convection to really develop. So it's just going to continue to march along to the west uh, as Fiona moves uh, away to the west-northwest. Now, eventually, the environment might get a little more favorable when it would approaches the Caribbean, at which point, um, you know, you might, you might have something try and develop. And again, this afternoon, we've got models all over creation uh, doing things with various systems. Now, here is Fiona, and here's that system behind it on, on the European. And the L would represent what's uh, left of either system. And here is the one that's moving off the African coast now that looks like it's probably going to develop rather quickly once it does. Now, what the European does is it loses Fiona, so it's just about gone. You can just see a, a little low from that lead system, which it, it still sort of has it right here in the south, southwest, uh, southeastern Bahamas. Um, and there's that next one that, that develops. And what the European does is eventually this one winds up uh, developing into a major hurricane but recurving out. And the, this model's view is that it spins up a low east of Florida and then turns it westward uh, in toward Louisiana. And now, that, I'm sure that's something that those folks don't want to hear. Uh, but again, this is one model's viewpoint. Uh, when we look at the GFS, um, the GFS, on the other hand, um, not too much different, at least until this point. It has a much more developed low uh, with uh, the second system. And here's that third system that becomes a hurricane. And that, that it agrees with uh, the Europeans' idea of recurving it. And what uh, this one, this uh, model does is it develops this into a strong tropical storm east of Florida, but then uh, takes it out to the east and then northeast from there, uh, mainly because of what's going on in the upper levels of the atmosphere. And naturally, you have the Canadian, which wants to spin up everything in, in its path, has uh, this piece of imagination where it actually develops um, the lead, the system approaching the Leeward Islands. Uh, it develops the one behind it. At, whoops, there we go. And then it takes it and you've got all sorts of lows spinning all over the place and eventually develops the, the, the one uh, in the Leeward Islands th that uh, winds up uh, becoming a hurricane and moves up into the Carolinas. Who knows if that's, that, that? I mean, these are all just wonderful pieces of imagination from all three models. I, I think one of the important things to look at in the overall pattern is where the upper air is going to be in all of this. And, you know, one big change in the models from uh, a few days ago is that it was trying to make some kind of deep trough in the east, but now that's been replaced by a ridge. So that's one major difference. And that when there's a, a, a trough that approaches in that northern stream, it never really drives it southward. The Canadian wants to leave enough room to allow something to lift up. How real is that? I, I don't know. I venture to say that it probably isn't. The GFS, on the other hand, has a um, much more well-developed ridge that it develops in the southeast United States. So it doesn't, it doesn't really bring down any kind of arm to pick it up. And in fact, it deflects. Uh, the, um, the the system that's east of Florida because eventually what happens is it develops another trough up in, in the Great Lakes and it produces a pretty much a west to east flow across the 
uh, northeast in the Atlantic and kicks whatever's out there out to the east. The Europeans' view is a little different, is also different because it's not nearly as deep with that trough. There's that ridge in the southeast that it develops, and then it doesn't really get that next trough that deep at all, so that uh, this thing winds up deflecting westward and moving out. So you really, this is how it's going to be every single day that we look at these things. They're always going to have some sort of different look, and, and the keys to the forecast longer term will be what is it going to really look like aloft in terms of the upper flow? And I don't think we have a real grasp on this at all. So we will uh, check back uh, probably around this time tomorrow or a little bit earlier and take a look at what models are doing. In the meantime, we've got a cold front moving through, and that's going to meet for some nice weather. Let's just real quick look at our own local weather uh, as we uh, take a look at that. Uh, switch over to uh, this view, and we'll put the precip and moisture. Oh, i got to change models. Let's go to the GFS. And let's put the uh, precip view here. And here's our front from tonight that moves on through and keeps on going. Nice high builds in. So now we're into Wednesday. We start to get back into a bit of a return flow. Uh, it's a little bit onshore-ish, as I'd like to say. And then we have another weather front at, toward the end of the week. Doesn't look like a particularly strong one. And another high that builds in for next weekend. So our weather is going to be relatively uneventful here. And then, of course, we'll spend our time trying to resolve what is or isn't happening in the tropics. Have a good uh, rest of your Sunday and a great uh, week ahead. Don't forget SNS Storm Chasers for all the latest on severe weather, the tropics, and the meteorologist JoeChaffee.com and WeatherLongIsland.com for all your latest local weather needs.